Now this problem asks us to identify the conic section, graph it, and label all of its parts. Uh, this is a, a, an example out of your book, but I, I kind of added stuff to this example so I get to talk more. You guys know how I love hearing my voice. All right, here we go. Here is a... Uh, hey, I don't want that on my video. <laughs> um, here, here's an equation. Uh, what, what, which conic section uh, do you think it is? It's um, definitely not on the list because only one of them is squared. Ooh, I just gave it away. What's, what only has one of them squared? No, it's not a circle. It's a hyperbola. Oh my goodness, you guys are killing me. It's a parabola. It's a parabola. Shh, I will tell you. Stop talking. If only one of the variables is squared, then you know it's a parabola. All the other ones have two variables that are squared. So in order to... Um, Write this out. Let's kind of give ourselves a vision here. If it's x squared, then it probably looks like this. x minus h squared equals 4p uh, y minus k. The h is always with the x. The k is always with the y. Um, <clears throat> now, if the x is squared, that means the y gets the 4p. Oh, I'm weird. Okay. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do here, I mean, the parabola, for the parabola, what you got to do is you got to get the one that's squared um, by himself with his other terms. So, x squared minus 2x, they should be with each other. And on the other side, you want to put everybody else. So, we have negative 4y plus 3. And what I did is I, I just used inverse operations to move uh, the 4y over to that side and then the negative 3 over to that side. Uh, but when you use inverse, inverse operations, the sign changes, blah, blah, blah. Now, in order to make it look like this, I had to make this into a perfect square. So let's make um, the x's into a perfect square, the x polynomial. So we're going to go plus blank right here. Uh, but whatever you add to one side of an equation, you must also add to the other side. It's not subtracting because we're on the opposite side. If we were staying on the same side, then we would subtract. But since we're going to the opposite side to uh, balance out our equation, uh, we're going to <coughs> be adding. So what would I have to add to this right here so it's a perfect square? Take this, divide it by 2, and square it, you get a positive 1. And then you have to add the positive 1 to the other side. So let's write out what we get. Now I'm going to factor this right now. When I factor it, I get x minus 1, and I'm going to square it. On the other side, I have negative 4y plus 4. Now, <clears throat> this almost looks like this right here. See, there's a difference though. This one over, he over here does not have... Um, the 4p separated from the y. Right now, the 4p is with the y. Look at the standard form. Standard form has the positive 1 in front of the y. So we need to have a positive 1 in front of this y. And so we take out a negative 4. When I take out a negative 4, I get y plus, no, y minus 1. And on the other side, I have my x minus 1 squared. So here's the standard form. How would this look on the graph? Well, you guys know what, what kind of graph this is, right? You guys know if it's a verti or a hori? It is a verti. It is a verti. Yeah, it's a verti, and we know that because the x is squared. Or you can think, oh, because the p is with the y. And I'll tell you why in a second. Let's pretend that we didn't know if it was a hori or verti. What would be my, my center or my vertex since this is a parabola? What's negative my. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. Yes. So my hk is. Oh, well, it's not negative 1, negative 1, because you see how it's minus h and minus k? So you've got to think the opposite when you look at these inside. So it's a 1, 1. That's my vertex. Uh, let's use green to graph this. Right, my vertex is that positive one, positive one. So there's my vertex right there. Now I need to know what the p is. What is my p? Um, well, what is 4p? 4p equals negative 4. Negative four. Huh. You pointed an arrow to it. That's how I knew. So 4p equals negative 4, which means p equals... One. Yes. And so I plug in negative 1 right there. Now, the question is, do I count... Uh, down one because that's where you would go for vertical or do I count left one because that's where you go for a horizontal uh, no you, you only do one or the other <clears throat> now this is why I, I like to say okay the P is with the Y so therefore I'm, I'm going to count up or down and in this case because the P is a negative one I'm going to count down one so my focus point is right there that means my parabola wraps around the focus downward that means my directrix is one the opposite way, horizontal line like that. But then and, you just draw uh, the V at one? The V? Uh, this is my vertex. That's why I labeled it V. Yeah, this is my directrix. So what's the directrix? Oh, the directrix is that one, right? Direct. 
DirectRx. Uh, this is a uh, one two. So my DirectRx you can say is y equals positive two. Why is it a two? Why is it a two? Because I counted one down to the focus point, and the DirectRx is the same distance away from the vertex. Oh, just I just count the other way. So that's how you do that guy. I really love